So in this example, we're going to show how to solve a basic initial value problem using Laplace transforms. Now you can use other methods for, for this problem, but the objective with this particular reasonably simple initial value problem is to illustrate the technique of the Laplace transform methods so that you can, you can go and actually solve more difficult problems. Okay? Now, you can see that our initial value problem is, uh, involves a first order ODE and some initial condition. Now, the right hand side of the ODE is a special function called the heavy side step function or a unit step function. Now, you can see that here I've, I've basically defined the function or written it out in a piecewise form and then I've drawn the graph. Now some books, some people don't even define the value at the jump point, okay? Or they define it down here or up here. It doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't change anything where Laplace transforms are um, involved, okay? So working with this definition, let's go through and illustrate the, the Laplace technique and then you can use the idea to solve uh, more difficult problems. Now you can see that the right hand side has a discontinuity in the, at, at t equals 1. Okay, so if you were to solve this problem by traditional techniques, what you would do is you would solve the problem for t less than 1, t greater than 1, and, and sort of, you know, connect the, the solutions together. So how do we do this with the plus transforms? Well, we use the... Uh, transform of derivatives. Okay, so we're going to use this formula here. And you can think of this as, you know, so, so essentially the, the little f here is the unknown function or the solution y. And the f of 0 is the y of 0, the initial condition. Okay? Now you can, you know, form transform derivatives for second order derivatives and nth order derivatives, but they won't be used in this particular problem. Okay. So let's, the f as a first step, let's take the transform of both sides of our ODE. Okay. Um, by the way, you might want to draw a line down here and sort of work with two columns. So we take the transform of both sides of our differential equation. Now because our Laplace transform is an integral operator, it basically involves integration, it's a linear operator. Okay? So, If I take the transform of the left-hand side, I can expand it and just write it as the following. Okay? Because the transform is a linear operator. And the right-hand side is just going to be this. Okay, so we, we don't know what this is. Let's calculate this, let's calculate this. Now on the right hand side, I'm going to use a table to calculate that transform. So if I look down my table, I'm looking for, for this down the left hand side. Here is the general form, it's an exponential divided by s. Okay. Now over here, I want to calculate the transform of the derivative. Well, there it is there. Okay. So let's apply those two ideas. So 
So by TOD, I mean transform of derivatives. Or you could just say I'm using a table here. Okay, so the transform of this will be the following. So that's the transform of the derivative y dash. This is the following. So what I'm doing now, I'm writing the transform of little y as big Y of S to emphasize that it's a function of S. And on the right hand side, I'll get the following. Okay, so now we're in a sort of algebraic setting. What we want to do is solve for big Y of S. Let's make big Y of S the subject in the bottom line and then we'll untransform everything to get little y of t. Okay, so to do that, what we're going to do is incorporate the initial condition. So I can, that term essentially is going to be zero. And I've got a common factor of big Y of S. So applying the initial condition, we obtain that's just basically going to be zero. So I can take a common factor of y of s and divide both sides by s plus one. Okay, so I've sort of done two steps in one there. Now, what is this? Well, we're going to have, so, so basically we've solved the transform problem now. We've solved it. Let's untransform everything. Let's use the inverse transform to get back to little y of t. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we need to take the inverse transform of this. So if we can calculate this inverse transform, then we actually solve the original problem. So this is the most difficult thing, usually, with these kinds of problems. It's easy to solve the transform problem, but it's, it's reasonably difficult, in some cases, to get the inverse transform. Okay, so first of all, what are we dealing with, it, with, with this particular form? Well, it's an exponential divided by a function of s. If you re sort of re rewrite that, it's an exponential times a function of s, right? e to the minus s times 1 all on s plus 1 bracket s. So, if we're going to look down our table, what have we got? Well, look there, that's exponential times a function of s. Okay? So if we look over here, that's the inverse transform of this general product. It's the second shifting theorem. Okay, so what we want to do to untransform our problem, it's in the form where the second shifting theorem is the way to go. Okay, the second shift, I know, I know the font's a bit small here, so the second shifting theorem. The inverse of this product is just the product of these two shifted functions. Okay? The SST stands for the second shifting theorem. So I'm just going to use a C as the constant here. Okay. So in this uh, context, big G of S is 1 on S plus 1 times S. So if we apply the second shifting theorem, uh, so we actually want to calculate this first. So let me just write it like this. So to calculate this, 
I need to actually calculate this, right? This big G of S is here. So how do I calculate the inverse transform of 1 over S bracket S plus 1? You think, oh yeah, partial fractions, let's split it up. Now there's a fast way to split these things and a not so fast way. I like to try the fast way first. Okay, if that doesn't work out, then I'll go back to the, the traditional techniques like uh, the heavy side uh, cover-up method or the method of um, uh, equating the coefficients. Okay? Now you can see if I just play with the denominator, oh, sorry, the numerator, if I play with the, with the numerator, I can actually break this up reasonably quickly. If I bracket it like that, and I break this up into two things, I'll get the following. Okay, well, the, in the first, this is going to cancel with this, so I'll get 1 on S. And in the second, I have a minus sign, that's going to cancel with that, so I get 1 on S plus 1. So the inverse transform is also a linear operator, so I can break that up into two bits. So now I can just use my table. These are things that actually lie in my table. So the inverse transform of 1 on S, that's 1. And the inverse transform of 1 on S plus 1, if I look down here, that's, that's that. That'll be e to the minus t. OK? So I'm almost there. I've got little g of t. What I want to do is form this product with c equals 1. OK? So, if this is g of little g of t, what is the shifted function with c equals 1? Basically, I replace t with t minus 1 in brackets. Okay? So, the last step. By the second shifting theorem, I know that my solution is the product of this with c equals 1. Okay? So, so there we go. Okay, there's my solution. Okay, so I might just add a line in here, c equals 1 in this thing for our particular problem. Okay. Now, so, so what does this look like then? Well, let's break up the solution. Let's say we had to sketch, sketch the solution. How would you sketch that solution? It looks quite complicated there, but it's not too bad actually. For t less than 1, this is 0, right? So the whole, the product will be 0. What about at t equals 1? At t equals 1, this is 1 half, and I'll get 1 minus e to the 0, so I'll get 1 minus 1, half times 0, it'll also be 0. And what about for t greater than 1? Well, this is now going to be positive 1, and this will just stay the same. So, so what you can do then is draw these, these uh, uh, sort of graphs and piece them together, and then you'll have the, uh, a graph of your solution. Yep. Oh, t equal, sorry, yes, you're right. Let me adjust that. So for t equals 1, this should be a half, and you get 1 minus e to the 0, which will just give you half times 0. And for t to the right of 1, this is 1, and this will just stay the same. Okay? So, let, let's try to interpret this a little bit more before we have a break. What, what's actually happening? For t to the left of, of 1, 
This is zero, so I get y double prime, uh, y prime plus y equals zero, and y of zero equals zero. Well, that only has a zero solution. But as soon as that gets switched on, something happens. So to the, when, when t is greater than 1, this is positive 1, and the problem is y prime plus y equals 1 with, this, uh, uh, with, with a new, it'll be a new initial condition. Okay, so you could, if you wanted to, solve the first problem and then move on and solve the second problem, but the pass transforms covers it all. Questions? Now, can you see, hopefully you can see, that this uses pretty much almost everything we've learned. Transform of derivatives. Second shifting theorem for this particular problem. Inverse transforms. Uh, table, using tables. Okay? But the idea is, for these problems, the idea is always the same, right? It's, 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 a, it's a, you know, three or four step method. Take the transforms of both sides. Apply the transform of derivatives and the initial conditions. Form the solution in the transform setting. Once you've got that done that, you've actually solved the problem in the, in the new transform setting. Then the hard thing is taking the inverse transform. This is where students kind of you know, fall over. You know, they, they can solve the transform problem, but getting back to the original setting is, is a little harder. And I, I, it is. So you have to be comfortable with the inverse transforms and sort of you know, applying first and second shifting theorems uh, from your table.